Okay, welcome back to this Learn How to Draw live stream for Wednesday, April 30th, 2014. So we're going to continue the color workshop with a color exercise. So the first exercise we're going to uh, demonstrate is the color study. So we're going to do some uh, color studies, color copies from uh, a uh, expert colorist, expert painter. And in this video, we're going to do uh, uh, Nathan Folks. So Nathan Folks uh, was my one of my first painting teachers. He taught me a lot about color and watercolor, and he's uh, 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 an incredible uh, painter and color stylist. Definitely a a expert in color. Somebody we should definitely uh, look to emulate for sure. So here, what I'm going to do um, is first, uh, we're going to look at a few of Nathan's pieces, and um, we're going to talk about how to do uh, a study, an accurate copy, and how to how first how to observe uh, color paintings uh, to do studies from, how to make accurate observations, and then how uh, we can actually execute the study so that a we can get the most uh, benefit. Because really, a, a study is, is a powerful exercise because uh, it does two things. One, it gives you mileage. So we need, you need mileage to get good at this stuff. Uh, that's, you know, that goes without saying. And two, um, it, it kind of allows you to have a conversation with an expert. So, uh, I mean, I've been fortunate enough to, uh, to know Nathan personally, but, uh, you know, there's, uh, there's many, many other artists, wonderful artists out there that we can look to their work. And if we don't, you know, have the luxury to know them personally or take a class with them, we can glean or learn as much as we can from studying their work. We can kind of take a journey uh, into, their, into their minds, so to say. Uh, so that's why I, I believe in doing these color studies. It's a powerful exercise, and uh, this, I, I, I give this assignment to, uh, uh, to pretty much uh, every uh, student or every young person I come across. Uh, my students at Noman uh, all know this. So that's my little sales pitch for color exercises. And, and actually, Nathan, I have to credit Nathan as well. He was the one who first got me uh, going down this path of, of studying uh, color uh, and and looking uh, to other uh, colorists, other experts. Okay, so this is a piece by Nathan. Here, this is a it's a digital piece uh, for the film Rio Two. So Nathan's uh, a color stylist, a location designer for uh, the animation studios, and uh, he did this uh, spectacular piece. Now. Um, uh, we can clearly see the beautiful color in the wide variety of color, right? And um, if you were to study this, the first, uh, at first glance, it may seem uh, impossible to match the color if you wanted to copy this. Because at first glance, it seems like, oh, there's millions of colors. Oh, look at all the beautiful greens and all oh, the wonderful yellows. And, and um, oh, it's just too much. It's just too much. Actually, let me open a, uh, a bigger version of it so we can see it here. Okay, so this is a higher res version. We're gonna take a look, we're gonna examine this here. Okay, so if, if we just take a quick glance, we can see uh, the first impression would be, oh my God, look at the greens. Oh, there's a million greens. And oh, look at that lake. There's purples and yellows and pinks. Oh my God, what am I going to do? Oh, look at the sky, blues and yellows and greens in the sky. Oh, right. This, uh, at first glance, it could seem very uh, intimidating. So the first thing that, that I do when I look at a piece First, I try to look at it. Uh, I step back from it, obviously. Try to get, try to soak in, soak it in as a whole. Now, um, 
the first thing I see is the value. So we know that's the most important part of the painting is the value structure. But if we're looking at color, if we're going to study the color of a painting, I first kind of get an idea for what's the dominant color, what's the dominant note, what's the dominant... Uh, what's what's the dominant color that this piece is about? And at first glance, we can clearly see the dominant color color range is blue and blue green. So this piece is mostly about uh, blue greens, greens and blues. So it's a it's a cool, it's a dominantly cool piece. So right away, I know uh, this piece is going to be about cools, blues and greens, and the the warms will be accents. The warms will be accents. Okay. So that's the first step. Is it dominantly warm? Is it dominantly cool? The next thing I look for is gradations. Gradations. Now, um, because I know, I'm f you know, I've, I've taken Nathan's classes and workshops. I'm familiar with this working method. Uh, but this working method, uh, 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 working method of using gradations uh, is common to, to many painters, many artists. So we want to start become familiar and looking for learning how to see and observe gradations. Okay, so what do I mean by that? A gradation is that a, a color uh, gradates or shifts or transitions from one color to another. So the most obvious example is the river, the this long uh, 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 winding river here. You can zoom in real quick. We can see the long winding river. Now at first glance, this could look like five million colors, like, oh, there's a blue, there's a pink, there's a yellow, oh, there's green, oh my God, what do I do, what do I do, right? But when I look at this river, I see a gradation. I see that he gradated from this light blue-green up top, gradates to yellow, pink and yellow, and then over here to yellow-orange, over here. So it gradates from blue to pink-yellow to yellow-orange, and then on top of the gradations, he puts accents to spice it up to make it seem even more colorful. But it really is just a simple gradation plus accents added at the end. Okay, so that's an obvious gradation. The next obvious is the sky. If we look at the sky clearly, for example, the bottom of the sky has a different color temperature. Here it's like blue, then transitions to blue-green, light blue-green, and then up to this darker gray-blue, this smoky gray-blue. So even in the sky, there's a gradation. Uh, the field of green, the, this forest, this tropical forest, also has gradations. At first glance, it looks like, oh, five million greens, yellow-green, blue-green, purple-green, oh my god, five million greens. But in reality, it's really just an elegant gradation. So we look here on this right side, We look on this right side, this right side here, we can see that here, I'm trying to get a good color that will show up. It's not going to work. Need more pink. And let me get a decent brush. There you go. Okay, so this field. So it starts. What I see when I see the this field of green, I see a gradation from up top. Notice how it's a little bit yellow, light green. And then it gets to this patch of kind of bluey light green and then this patch of darker grayer blue green so yellow green light blue green to blue green there's a beautiful transition gradation and then what happens he puts again accents on top accents of blue accents of this light yellow accents of orange and pink and more accents of this purple same uh, with this opposite field Right, we clearly see this part gradates to this part of the green, this same gradation happening here. 
So it's a back to front gradation. And then again, accents of orange and pink were added on top to, to make it seem more complex and sophisticated. And the less obvious gradations are of the birds. So if we look at the birds, we can see there's a gradation from this bird, dark blue, green, dark purple, over here to a grade eight to a lighter field of blue, here an accent of light green blue, and then over here more darker, grayer green in the shadows. So there's a gradation happening here from this rich blue, purple blue, to a lighter blue green, to an even lighter blue green highlight, to uh, more shadowy dark gray blue greens. So again, a less obvious transition or gradation happening there. Uh, so uh, they're everywhere. That's really what I'm looking for. I want to know how the colors move because really um, that's how color works uh, in the natural world. In nature, color is light. Light is what? It's photons, particles of energy. And what the photons do, they constantly move. They don't stand still. They constantly move. They constantly strike objects and bounce off objects, giving color a natural uh a gradation or transition, right? So, so uh, be mindful uh, of the gradations. Always look for the gradations. Assume that uh, the artist worked with gradations because most likely they did. Okay, so now let's actually do a study. I'll show you how uh, I would approach this. Make a make a study of this. So the first thing I want to do is I want to um, first match the aspect ratio. And to be quite frank, uh, I probably wouldn't do these this big. This is kind of huge in my monitor. I don't know if you guys can tell. And I would probably do these also in traditional, but I'm using uh, Photoshop here for the demonstration. So I want to match the frame. And, uh, you know, you want to work relatively small and quickly if you're doing uh, this. These are shorter studies, so anywhere from like 10 to 20 minutes. If you're working traditionally, keep them really small, 2 inches to 4 inches uh, wide or, or tall, about, about, about a thumbnail size. So we're just doing, uh, uh, doing a study. We, we don't want to copy one for one, do an exact copy, although we can. Uh, but at this stage, we just want to do a quick little color study. Okay, so what I'm going to do is next I'm going to try to match the drawing as best as I can. And unfortunately, I have it up, up top there. Try to match the drawing. And when I match the drawing, I'm looking for... Excuse me, I'm looking for the... light and dark shapes first, the, the proportion of the shapes, the location of the shapes, the nature of the shapes. Are they more squarish? Are they curvy? So I'm basically uh, doing my best to match uh, the drawing and the design because the design is important as well. Because um, um, I know uh, uh, the first color decisions will be made based on the design, will influence the decisions of color. So that's why we want to be uh, very mindful of the, uh, of the drawing of the, uh, of the piece we're studying. And uh, uh, fans of Nathan will know that Nathan is, um, is also an excellent draftsman. So uh, he can, along with being great at painting, he can... Um, He can uh, draw very well. So, you know, uh, a drawing is a big part of Nathan's uh, process. So we definitely want to be mindful of the drawing. But that's pretty much it. You know, I'm not trying to get every detail. I just want to kind of want to get the, the, the major things, that big tree, obviously the river, and the big cloud of smoke. And uh, yeah, uh, I probably would do these in uh, digital, or excuse me, in traditional 
uh, watercolor. It's more it's more fun uh, in my opinion. All right, so remember I said this is generally a piece about cool. This piece is generally a cool-themed piece. It's a cool-dominant piece, and it's mostly about blues and blues-greens. So first thing I want to do is... Um, I want it to uh, drop in some blues... And I'm gonna work back to front. So I'm gonna this is even though we're working in Photoshop, I'm gonna I'm gonna treat this like I'm working on uh, traditional paper and we do that uh, working back to front. Or at least uh I find working back to front uh more helpful. So I'm just gonna drop in this uh wash of uh, blue. Uh, I'm looking at the sky here. And if you do this digitally, please uh, don't, uh, you know, don't, uh, don't uh, color pick. What well, kind of defeats the point if you uh, color pick? So I'm looking at the sky and I'm trying to be very mindful of the gradation. So already I got the wrong color. That one's pretty close little yeah to be honest I've actually uh, never done this <laughs> in the computer it's actually uh, it's slowing me down I think because in the in the computer you have uh, you know infinite color choices versus uh, in traditional I have to like make these colors so I have to be very, uh, be more uh, mindful of the colors I use. Or I have to commit. I have to commit uh, much sooner to the colors I use and the values I use. I'm just trying to note that little nugget in the sky back here. Note the gradation. Uh, next, working back to front, uh, let's see. Could probably do uh, the back side of the field, the color field, or uh, the grass. And actually, yeah, let me note uh, that dark patch in the uh, tree as well. A little dark patch, green in the tree. The transitions to a lighter patch. There you go. Now I want to note that, bring that back. Actually, it's a little greener, more yellow. There's a transit, there's a gradation happening in that dark patch that I just caught. Gradation from gray green to this dark gray green to this lighter gray green. Uh, excuse me, yeah, lighter. Blue green is happening there, grayish as well. Uh, next, that puff of smoke. Puff of smoke. So this, I look at it. It looks like a big, big mass of gray. It does gradate from slightly blue here to gray, uh, as well up here, lighter to blues there. So let's try to match that as best as I can. It's going to go really gray and relatively dark.
And then I'm going to try to match the blue and the purple at the bottom. Match the dark spot inside it. Yeah, this is more of a slight uh, value uh, gradation. And now I can see the temperature is wrong. Needs a little bit more. There it is. I'm trying to match the temperature along with the gradation. Okay. Uh, next, uh, back to front, would be the grassy field or the field of forest. So that again, this is a gradation. Starts from uh, blue, blue, green to um, uh, this gray, misty, uh, blue-green to more yellow-greens and then to this darker blue-green up top. So let's try, uh, okay, so that's not saturated enough. I'm just going to wash this whole field with the dark foreground green, kind of there. Now I'm going to gradate from the darker version to a slightly lighter, greener, gray version, just back here. And I'm ignoring the uh, the river for now. It's going to be my third, the next shape I address. First, I just want to block in this bit of gradation happening here. There's also some edge happening as well. And then now I can go to a yellow, pretty intense yellow green right happening here. And here I could probably use a, a custom brush. So I'm looking at uh, Nathan's. This is a digital piece as well. So uh, I'm looking at it and I could see the custom brush technique. So that uh, might serve me to use a custom brush in this scenario. I don't think I have a, a treetop one yet. Okay, and then... Um, so the gradation is there. Now I can drop in the accents. So I see pink accents, purple accents. Let's see where I can put those little pinks accents here. Let's see, you'll see that once uh, the gradation is in place, that the accents just look awesome. There is a uh, yellow and orange accents happening over here near the uh, near the fire more yellow green accents happening there I'm gonna bring the fire down a little bit this fire needs to be moved remember we want to try to match uh, the drawing as much as possible I see a patch of blue dark blue happening here dark blue accent and then uh, we pretty much have to do the river now 
because it's uh, it's going to help uh, me make a better judgments on color when we can see the river in there. Okay, so that's the next step is the river. Uh, and again, we said the river was a gradation from cool blue green to yellow to um, this gradation from yellow to pink or excuse me to um, blue green to yellow and to yellow orange so I'm just going to block in the shape of the river So I block that in. Now we want to get the gradations. So it gradates from this. Uh, oh, it's too. It's not bright enough. So this blue green to this yellow, happening there. And from this yellow, we're gonna to go to a yellow orange. Okay, so it might be a little too yellow orange. There you go. There you go. And then we have a little bit of pink happening here, just a touch. And I'm probably going to switch brushes now so I can get uh, more uh, smoother transition there. And then now we want to get these accents of pink, purple. So we just, uh, oops, just pick a pink already, already have made. Oops. And just kind of dab that in there. It's a little too much of that, so we'll bring some blue back. And then some of that green ash color. We'll just drag it down. That's pretty sure what Nathan did. He uses a custom brush. Get that. Uh, get that. That reflected light. And then another pass of this blue green happening here. Uh, that's the sky reflecting down. And this another pass of this purple blue green. Where are we right here? Okay, now I'm going to correct the shapes a little bit. I'm going to correct the shape, make sure the drawing looks good. I'm going to correct the shape of the river. Remember, the river is a pretty important uh, design. Right, so I want to correct the shape a little bit and back here this needs to be uh, the edge needs to be softened back here so I'm gonna come back with a soft brush as well then we can add those uh, dots of birds that's happening there Then we can add uh, splashes of red and orange. It's happening in the fire. It's a little darker, looks like. A 
such a cool uh, piece. So many uh, wonderful things we can learn uh, just by studying this one piece. We can learn about uh, good design, we can learn about uh, good value structure. The values is excellent. We can learn about um, Photoshop technique, beautiful technique or painting technique. We can learn about, um, uh, obviously, uh, color as well. So, so many things uh, we can pick up just by studying, uh, doing these studies, studying experts like Nathan Folks. Uh, such a powerful exercise. And it also builds your tolerance, right? Because a lot of times color, being able to work with color is just having really good, really high tolerance. So the more you can, the more you can appreciate or uh, use saturated color, uh, the higher your tolerance is. Okay, so I'll keep going. Now I'm going to block in the dark mass of this tree. And I'm going to do that. Let's see. going to uh, it's a brown so this is it goes from like a brown to this gray green the dark mass so I'm going to block that in Okay, just gonna block in this big mass of dark. And again, within the darks, there's uh, accents added and gradations, subtle gradations and accents added to make it seem more sophisticated. I'm just gonna ignore the birds. I'm gonna do the birds last. They're the most foreground uh, object. Okay, so now we're going to this brown, dark, rich brown. As you probably may have guessed, um, uh, that tree is warm. Uh, there's a reason why that tree was made warm. It's not an accident. He didn't randomly choose that orange, that dark orange for the tree. It's because, uh, again, this image is mostly about cools. So in order for uh, that to stick out, he had to make it uh, this area to, to come into focus for us to pay attention to it. He wanted it to uh, have some uh, uh, complementary color. In this case, uh, a warm complements the uh, the cool quite nicely. And I'm trying to just trying to do my best to match this shape. I do need a texture brush to match the texture. Uh, let's try this one. Uh, it's not going to work. Let's try this one. This one's okay. Yeah, I do have a treetop brush somewhere. I'm just <laughs> I don't know if, I don't know if it's so there. So the with the texture is starting to feel better. Starting to feel more like uh, leaves and things. Okay. Keep going. And get these greeny accents on the trees there. Uh, 
I'm going to go ahead and drop these accents on the trees real quick. And then I'm going to move on to that. Uh, the gradation happening in the tree right here it goes from orange, a dark orange. Let's see if I can pull that orange over, see how it looks. Probably too right. Yep, it is. It's okay. We'll correct that in a second. Okay, so this orange is close. It's not quite right. It does need to be redder and darker. There you go. And darker. It's very dark. Very, very dark field. Okay, so we're almost done here. I want to now note uh, these vines. It's part of the design. These vines are part of the design. These vines are used as a pointing tool. They point to the birds. And the vines have little highlights on them, little bit, bits of green, as well as uh, little bits of orange and yellow, or excuse me, orange and red. And now uh, we can get the, the accents, the dark green accents that's happening in the trees. And we have so much color on our painting now, our little study, that it can just pick from our, our scene, from uh, our little study of Nathan's scene. Okay, so finally we come to the birds. And I'm not going to just flat out draw the bird. That's uh, that wouldn't be <clears throat> that wouldn't be useful. So I'm just going to block them in as best as I can. Let's see. I'm gonna just pick a nice brush that I can draw with. So first I'm going to just block in a nice blue, purple blue. See, even the birds themselves have gradations within the birds. It's very cool. This one has slightly bluer greens, lighter. This one too. This one's even bluer green and lighter here. This bird is like an accent bird. This one's lighter, a little more blue-green. It's not that light. Okay, that's a real crude representation of those birds, but uh, again, we're just doing uh, the notes. We just want the color notes. Uh, let's see, we can put some more accurate uh, color notes there. And now actually the drawing uh, needs to be adjusted a little bit. What a note. 
out the gradation and all the birds and no dark gradation happening this set of birds in the back the shadow gradates into these birds as well we still have to address uh, the highlight this bird that's in highlight right here make sure I have the most accurate shape I can get this one And these birds here have a little bit of darks in them. They have a dark beak shadow. They have a slightly dark warm eye. So that warm eye is not by accident as well. That's all uh, carefully designed by Nathan. And my drawing's a little off here. You can see. That's okay. I did my best. I did the best. It feels uh, like the notes, the major color notes are there. And, uh, you know, I uh, I was able to, to uh, make good observations and make good decisions. And really, that's the benefit of this whole color study exercise is to learn to make uh, better decisions. And of course, one way we can make good decisions is by studying the work of experts like Nathan. And this study is pretty much done here. And I just want to make sure I have these last bits of uh, colored notes. This was uh, my drawings a little off, but um, we can still try to correct as best as possible. And we're pretty much done with this study. We can continue to refine the shapes as needed. Here I can refine the birds. But, you know, I, I want to leave this uh, kind of rough. Because, again, if you're doing these traditionally, you're doing them small, uh, you won't have a lot of room uh, to make more fine-tuned corrections. So um, I do prefer uh, these being done small. And now I'm just going to tap. Oh. It's the wrong brush. And I'm just going to tap some lightness into the clouds. And that is pretty much it for this study. We can do one more. This is what Nathan would do. He'd have uh, the edges cleaned up. Uh, with tape, he's famous for having uh, clean edges on his uh, on his work. Okay, so we've probably been on for a while. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and stop the stream here, so that um, the video is uh, not too long. And uh, I'll go ahead and continue the stream with one more study, and we'll continue that on the next video. So, uh, thank you for watching uh, this portion of the exercise. Stay tuned for. Uh, part three will continue with the color study exercise, so stay tuned.